Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian and I am the Horror Show host. And today I have a very special guest on my channel. I am very honored that he was able to make time in his busy schedule to come on my show. He is the executive producer of The Fast and the Furious from way back in 2001, a writer, writer of the Skulls trilogy, U.S. Marshals Ghost Ship, um, director, writer of Quarantine 2, The Terminal, The Quiet Ones, and a director of Blood Brother and Deep Blue Sea 3, which is the highlight on this <laughs> on this little interview we got going on. So how are you doing, John? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Brian? I'm good. I'm good. Do you want to tell anything to the fans of the movie? Well, um... You know, I, I uh, I'm happy to get right into the questions. I mean, we, uh, you know, we we had sort of a daunting prospect trying to uh, follow in the footsteps of the 1999 uh, Deep Blue Sea, uh, which I revere, uh, and so we all took it. Uh, you know, we 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 knew that we had a big task ahead of us, and we we gave it everything we could. So uh, I've been. Very uh, excited about uh, the response and, and hope people uh, get a chance to, to see it and let us know what they think. Yeah, I've noticed uh, some of the responses to the film are quite positive. I was happy to see that because I do enjoy the film a lot. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I was um, also surprised that uh, IMDb is being quite, the reviewers in there are being quite fair. Usually they're they're bashing these kind of movies, but... <laughs> yeah, you know what? Um, that's a good point. I think when you um, when you make a sequel to a great movie, um, you're sort of automatically starting from a place of of uh, a lack of originality, if you will, because you know it's a sequel. You're 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 you know following the footsteps of some someone else's creation, someone else's story, and so I think in a way. Uh, some you know people get pretty primed to not like it, and I think that's fair um, because it's you know it is uh, uh, dovetailing on on someone else's creation. So um, I think that makes it doubly hard to try to pull something good and and quasi original off. And so you know having done um, the quarantine two. Uh, I was pretty familiar with what we were, <laughs> what we should, ex what we should expect, uh, and, and thus very kind of, uh, pleasantly surprised by the reaction so far. I just hope people, you know, give it a, uh, give it a chance, um, and, uh, a fair chance, uh, and, you know, see if they like it or not. Yeah, I was, I actually, um, watched the trailer when it first came out and I was like, this looks pretty good. Um, and then when I saw it, I was blown away. Uh, but were you involved in the early stages, like when it was first announced, like it was going to be on Netflix, um, and then it went into production? Were you involved during those early stages of the filming? Um, do you mean sort of in the development process or? Uh, more so in the development process, yeah, because they at first announced that it's going to go straight to Netflix, and then it kind of just went straight to Blu-ray and DVD and digital, which was... Which I was hoping for that too, so I'm happy it went there. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I honestly don't know where the Netflix um, idea came about. I don't know if that was a, a an early deal that Warner Brothers had made with them, because when I came on the project, it was actually a um, the the idea was that this would premiere on uh, Vudu, um, but Vudu at the time was owned by someone else. I believe it's recently been sold. And I think it got very sort of complex about how they were going to, uh, you know, release, release this movie. Um, and so uh, ultimately, you know, was kind of released everywhere. Um, but I, I, you know, the, the number two was out, I believe in 2018. Yeah. And I came on the project, uh, almost exactly a year ago to the day today. Um, and so when I came on the project, uh, we were a little bit uncertain as to, you know, what, what, uh, how the movie was going to be released. Um, but I, you know, I was fortunate enough to come aboard uh, at the very, very beginning of the, um, 
the uh, production process, there was a, a draft uh, of the script that was written by Dirk Blackman, who's a, a very, very good writer. Um, and um, his, you know, the concept in his script, uh, this sort of uh, floating island, the, the theme of, uh, uh, you know, climate change um, and, and how it uh, infects uh, or in, infuses the story uh, was what, you know, drew me to the project. Visually, the idea of setting a, a you know, an insane shark movie on this floating island uh, was was really kind of intriguing to me. So I, I you know, I kind of jumped on board and we sort of took it from there. Well, that's good. I'm glad that uh, the ideas came together and the releasing was not too daunting of a task. Um, because especially with COVID and everything going around right now, it's probably the best that went straight to digital. I'm assuming that was the uh, intention all, all along, right? It, it was. Um, you know, this for me was the first, um, you know, straight to streaming project that I had, I had um, been involved with. Um, and so this was kind of all, all, you know, the process was a bit new to me. Um, obviously, we didn't anticipate um, you know, what sort of happened in the world. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, um, you know, when the, the, the budget for this, uh, is obviously very ambitious for, I, I hope people feel what we were able to pull off. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we kind of knew what our parameters were going in. We knew that it was going to be streaming and not in theaters. So there was, you know, this year there was really no, uh, debate about should it be in theater, should it not, because we knew that it wasn't going to be. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, we've, we've been, uh, you know, fortunate uh, in sort of a, 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 an unhappy way because of the way the world is now. Um, you know, we're probably getting a little bit more uh, attention and eyeballs than we might normally have gotten had movies like Tenant, you know, been out uh, right now. I think we 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 would have, you know, we would have had a much harder time to to get people to look at the movie, frankly. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, trying to find the audience while all this is going on is just yeah, yeah. Uh, so true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for Warner Brothers. Uh, was the July 28th date intentional? I actually researched this slightly. I was like, I think that date sounds familiar. Yeah, And it's, actu it's, it's actually the date the first one came out in 1999. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Um, I am uh, assuming that it was intentional. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I never asked Warners about the date. I knew, you know, I also knew that this was the date. And I sort of assumed that somebody... Uh, put the time and effort into to coming up with that plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I think I should give them credit for it, but I don't, I, <laughs> I honestly <laughs> don't know if it was, if it was um, deliberate or not. It was certainly a good idea. And we, you know, that, that date was established before I came on board, which is why I don't really know about it. Yeah. Um, but certainly um, the original Deep Blue Sea uh, and, and, you know, trying to do justice to it was a huge part of our effort with this movie. And so I, I think that that, you know, the date uh, kind of works with what the overall um, ethos was as we were moving forward. Would you be up for making a fourth movie if they came to you with an uh, option for that? I, uh, let's put it this way. Um, I love the franchise and I think there are lots of possibilities in terms of where to take this. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely, I would definitely be up for it if the story was something that I was interested in. Um, you know, to be perfectly frank, doing Deep Blue Sea 3 at the budget that we did, um, you know, almost killed a lot of people, including myself, um, because it was so ambitious. And I don't mean from a safety perspective, I mean, from a meant, you know, from like, a yeah. killed our minds, because it was just, it was such a challenge um, to, you know, to try to pull this off. And so I think that if, um, you know, if we had a little bit more, uh, 
you know, tools in the toolbox um, and a little bit more time than, you know, I would be, I would be interested. Um, but I, I think that, you know, from a creative perspective, there are so many places to take, to take this story. Um, I mean, the, the, you know, the, uh, the first and the second movie sort of set up so many story strands that you could pull back in to create a fourth um, mm -hmm. that I think that, um, you know, there are lots of sort of plausible opportunities to keep the, to keep the story going um, yeah. in a unique, you know, in a unique environment. Um, what I, re you know, what I always return to for a potential fourth is I really personally think it's important to maintain the tone of the first one. Um, and so I wouldn't want to go the Jaws direction or the Sharknado direction. I want to try, I would try to sort of keep this in the wheelhouse of the Deep Blue Sea franchise. Um, uh, but I think that that means finding a really kind of clever and interesting locale um, that has a story and a theme behind it like um, you know, we, we had in Little Happy uh, and would take some work. But I, I would love, you know, I would, I would love to do a, 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 a number four um, if we could, you know, find a way to kind of, you know, pull it off uh, in a way that was satisfying for our audience. So I did have an idea, but you don't have to take it. It's mm -hmm. just a suggestion. If uh, you did a Deep Blue Sea 4, they said that all the bull sharks were killed, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they weren't. Maybe they were hiding some. And, and like Dirk Blackman said, I, I watched mm -hmm. the Comic Con interview. Yeah, where he was suggesting a battleship or a warship or something that houses the sharks or yeah. something like that that can house the sharks. So they were covering of the. So you have that whole cover up angle, and the sharks are still alive angle. So you got something to work with. I think that's a very interesting idea. You know. Um... The uh, there's a little bit of uh, Day of the Dolphin in that. Do you remember that movie? <laughs> no, unfortunately, uh, it's probably should, way before. Yeah, it's it's, probably I way know it's an old movie, but you should. Uh, it's before my time too. But you should, <laughs> you should check, you should check that out. Uh, it's actually a really good movie. But that that's an intriguing. It's an intriguing idea. I mean, it was really fun to kind of hear. You know, it's fun to hear your idea and also kind of Dirk's idea. They sort of, Combined, uh, you know. Yeah. They, yeah. they, may, maybe you guys should get together and, and, and do the fourth one Yeah, <laughs> and call if me you when you're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you want to mention it, it's fine. I'll work with them, but it's, uh, I don't have this. I don't know how to contact him. I don't know if he has a Twitter or anything. So well, I'm sure he'll watch this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have any questions for people out in the audience? Like we could uh, have them ask in the comment section below or during the stream when it premieres. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I'm, I don't want to add any spoilers, but I'm always interested in what people liked uh, and the most and disliked the most about Deep Blue Sea 3. Um, I'm super interested in trying to discern if um, the subtle and also not so subtle climate change thread um, was something that people responded to or did they feel it was exploitative um, uh, so that's that's another another question um, you know it, it's clearly um, clearly some people take the whole sort of climate change element and also the kind of female empowerment element that, mm -hmm. that run you know that runs through the 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 screenplay uh, take it in a negative way and sort of politicize it. Um, yeah. So I'm interested in, you know, do you feel like that's the right thing to do? Is it not? Did that like some people will not watch the movie because they hear climate change? Yeah, I've heard some comments. Yeah, and and as you know from the story, the climate change element is really more of. Um, a ploy. A ploy. It's a, and so um, there was a debate as to whether that should run in the trailer because mm. it could, it could, you know, politicize the movie perhaps. So I'm like curious as to whether people 
um, think that that was a good idea or not a good idea. So those those are kind of my, you know, my my biggest questions. It's funny you mentioned that because when the trailer before the movie came out, I actually commented on one of the trailers. I don't know which one it was. I said I have a feeling this climate change angle is just a ploy by the villains. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I was like, uh, I'm you've seen too just, many movies. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But, um, I thought the climate change aspect, like it was handled well. It wasn't like it was trying to be forceful. Like you got to hear what we have to say about climate change. You know. Yeah. Um, it's. I think movies that have have to have that angle, a political angle like that, do it best when they're subtle. Because you're gonna, agree. like like you said, you're going to lose a lot, of, a lot of audience members if they don't agree with your political beliefs on a movie. Yeah. So. And and we and we try, you know, we uh, in this kind of a movie, I think it would be a huge mistake to sort of use it as a soapbox for anybody's, you know, views. I mm -hmm. think it's it's just more. This is uh, the setting. Um, is in an, in an environment that is being threatened and that's just a fact um yeah. and that you know there is the the climate change uh theme i think we handle um in what i feel is a, a, a good and subtle way through the uh the richard character and the lucas character and their sort of debate and both of them are kind of at extreme ends uh, yep. and, T and Tanya's character, Dr. Collins, is sort of in the middle. Um, that's kind of the, our simplistic view of, of, of where we took it. Um, but, you know, it's uh, ultimately their positions are defined by their actions. Uh, and, you know, this is this is uh, we were trying to we were trying to be sensitive and smart about it, but also in absolutely no way trying to be, you know, preachy and tell the audience what to think. And, yeah. you know, so, so it was, it was, you know, it was a fine balance. My best piece of advice for anyone who doesn't want to watch the movie because it mentioned climate change. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed the first movie for not taking it seriously and just having a fun time, then do the same with this one. I, I completely, I completely agree. Um, this is a hundred percent about, uh, fun. It is an you know unabashedly escapist movie, um, mm -hmm. and in in a time where I think that we can all use a you know a break from our realities, uh, yeah. and so you know uh, that's I, I think that's great advice, which is just to sort of sit back, enjoy, laugh, have fun. I mean, a lot of the movie, as you know, is just like completely absurd, uh, and so. Um, you know, it's, it's just, just, you know, have fun. It's, it's what I often go to the, to the movies for. I just like, you know, I want to, I want to have fun. And we had a lot of fun making this one. I had a lot of fun watching it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. And I, and I appreciate these really good questions. No problem. Uh, so any other questions you had for the audience or were you all set with that? Um, I would I would be interested in what they found to be the scariest moments. Mm. Um, like where did they really, really, really get scared? Um, I'm always interested in um, the the scares where people anticipated that they get scared versus where they didn't see it coming. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you know because you saw a couple of the kills in the trailer, um, yeah. did, did that hurt your experience? Because there's a lot of debate about what you put in the trailer and what you don't. One um, of them, one of them did, but it wasn't like it was when it was coming in the movie. I, in my review, I actually say this. I was like, yeah. I hope they just did that for the trailer and they changed it in the movie. But then my rational side of my head was like, they probably didn't have the money to redo it. So, but other yeah, than that, yeah. other, uh, other than the trailer, I pretty much stayed away from clips and stuff. Except Good. for obviously the uh, Comic Con footage that was shown in during the interview, but yeah, I tried to steer clear of it. That's what helped. Yeah, I I would say the, my last question would be, um, uh, w you know, what did people think of the the CG and the sharks? Mm. Um, there have been 
you know, uh, there's been a mixed reaction. I mean, it's generally been favorable, um, mm -hmm. but there have been some pe people that have really hated the CG or felt like the CG was very kind of um, uneven. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like, as a filmmaker, you wonder, okay, what, like two people see the same thing. Why does one see it as bad and one see it as good? Like, was there a sequence, was there a specific sequence where you felt like the sharks, you know, sucked or weren't as, weren't as good as the others? Um, because just saying, well, you know, having one person say the CG stinks and the other people, you know, someone else saying it was terrific doesn't help me. Like, yeah. I'm, curi I'm curious if there were moments where like that was really good or moments where like, you know, that was not as good. Um, I have my own favorites mm -hmm. uh, and we had to do this very, very quickly to make Shark Week. Um, it would have been nice to have sort of another month. Um, mm. I think that, you know, our, our um, uh, the, the visual effects company, uh, if you had any idea, like they had to do this during the whole COVID situation. So they mm. couldn't actually be together as a creative unit. And they just did, uh, in my opinion, like a heroic job pulling this off during COVID considering they, they couldn't work you know, at their company, they had to all work from home. Um, so they, they just, you know, they just did a spectacular job, I think. Um, but there's always some sequences in any movie, but in particular this movie where you wish you had had a little more time with some of the sharks. Um, so, you know, I'd be interested to see what people had to say about that. Also, I think like I said in my review that 95% of the effects were, above sub no sorry above average mm -hmm. so that that leaves about maybe 60 percent of the effects that were excellent and th uh, about 35 that were uh, above average which is still mm -hmm. leaving five percent of the effects to be uh a little shaky but not too bad so i mm -hmm. think especially when you watch a sci-fi channel movie most of the time their effects are eh, but yeah. some of the time some of the time they are okay but I think this really added weight, which is a big uh, factor into the effects. Like, if you don't have weight on these sharks, it looks like there's just a giant cloud swimming through the water. It, yeah. it doesn't, you don't feel the weight of these sharks, especially in the opening scene where you have the sharks swimming in front of the camera. You can really feel like they're uh, really there. Like, they're, uh, they're trained, not trained, but they know how to move is in formation because there there's there's one part in the scene where there's there's the three sharks and you have one kind of going veering to the other yeah. shark and it kind of goes back like yeah. oh i gotta fix myself that's that's natural it's like something a shark would do they don't just swim in a straight line they would be kind of veering off but trying to stay together so yeah. it yeah. it really it really works in a lot of scenes and uh i was surprised especially what when watching the trailer I was like, oh, this is a hundred, uh, like a really good, like a lot better than most Sci-Fi Channel films. Probably all Sci-Fi Channel films, right? <laughs> but also, I like the fact that the um, you brought back the practical shark from Part Two. I don't know if it was the same one or if they rebuilt it or remade a new one. Uh, but you had the uh, practical bull shark, and that's on that scene with the boat. Yes, it, it looks great. That was Bella. That was from the second the second movie. Um, we, uh, uh, that was sort of the, the sole surviving, uh, practical, um, piece of equipment that, 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 you know, we inherited. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, we initially weren't sure if we could use her cause it took some money to kind of bring her back, uh, into fighting shape. Um, but, uh, um, Bella was very, helpful to us, not only for the scene on, on the boat, but also as a um, practice and rehearsal tool for the actors, because mm -hmm. that gave them a chance to sort of see, because, you know, she was built to, 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 you know, to specs that gave the actors a chance to interact um, with, with, with a, a bull shark that was the right size, you know, where are the eyes, where's the mouth, how big it is, et cetera. 
Um, so we used, you know, we used her quite a bit, but yeah, she, she was, she was real. That was, that's really good, <laughs> good to know because it was, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's good to know because it saves money in a way to like, you don't have to rebuild it or build another shark, right? <laughs> yes. You know, and those, those sharks are, um, you know, any kind of prosthetic like that is it's, it's unbelievable how expensive they are to create, you know, because it's a scu- it's it's a sculpture and it's giant, and you mm-hmm. know you need to get it right in the skin, and so you know I know that um, that uh, on the second, um, you know, on Deep Blue Sea two, uh, they they put a lot of work into her, so we were lucky to 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 get her back. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that really does help with the film too, because a lot of shark films, when people watch them, all they see is CGI and uh, CG sharks, and so having a practical shark in there will please not only practical effects uh, fans, but the CGI isn't too bad either. So it, that it kind of balances the fandom quite well. I think I feel. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, really great to talk to you. Thank you, John Pogue, for doing this stream with me. It made my day when you announced that you would do it with me. I was like, oh. Oh, <laughs> No, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your thoughts, Brian. Thank you. No problem. And thank you all for watching. And I am Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Make sure to like, comment on, as well as share this video. And check out Deep Blue Sea 3. I'll remember to put a link to it on Amazon where you can watch it on Prime Video. And Amazon, you can also buy it at Walmart on Blu-ray. I found that out a little later and I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> so I ran out and got my copy, as well as buying it on Prime. Yeah, and Voodoo, too. Voodoo, too, yeah. Yeah. And also, make sure to like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon, where even a dollar a month will help keep this channel going on strong, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, make sure to leave comments and subscribe.